I promise you I'm not trying to make you struggle, but I did want you to see what my morning catch turned into. My morning catch turned into lunch. Winner, winner, fish for lunch, not dinner. All right, keep watching. All right, so here we are back at it. Another great morning. The weather's perfect. The tide is falling. And um, you can see that I've gotten my rod set up. And I have my sand fleas with me. And that's actually all I brought this morning. Now, typically I come out with sand fleas and shrimp and fiddler crabs, you know, the whole shebang. But uh, this morning I am exclusively targeting the black drum um, because I've been on them since Saturday. Um, having some great success there. So um, <laughs> black drum consumption is way up uh, in my household. Uh, right about now and um, you know I, I can't say that I'm sad about that because they're really good um, good fight um, you know it also is, is, has been fun going out to the beach and just walking down the beach with my sand flea rake and meeting folks and talking to them about what I'm doing and what I'm catching and why I'm catching them and you know so it's been a little bit of an experiment a little bit of a journey you can see I've hooked up here I have a fish on you'll also notice you probably picked up on it already that I have my bigger rods out and my taller rods because I actually have lost a couple of fish um, over the past uh, week because they just dig. Uh, some of the bigger ones have you know, run me down into the rocks. At least I'll say one did and the other one of course you saw my video where I caught the five where he ran me into my other line. So um, and speaking of getting snagged even with my long rod here you can see this one actually got caught on a rock on the way in here so it's kind of stuck so emergency measures being taken i'm just going and actually putting my net underneath there and basically just yanking it loose and um I'm fortunate to be able to get that fish before it actually got off so um i would definitely say if you have longer rods uh, when you're fishing for these fish because they are strong they do have the ability to dig on you and um I mean, that's just going to help you and of course having the net uh, down here because the ones I've been catching are nice size, but believe it or not, they do get much bigger than that. Uh, so having a net handy that uh, you can get those fish up out of there with will probably save you a, a few tears um, if you get emotional when you lose a fish. But um, like I said, been good. Um, you see my cooler there, styrofoam cooler. Um, that's the fish, just give you a little visual of that. And I actually have a little a 14 inch measuring line on my, measure bucket. on my bucket so when you see this see my camera kind of move there just then uh, that's me actually using my little measuring line 14 inch line that i put on my bucket because i'm serious about this thing you know so i said i had to have a 14 inch measurement on my bucket so i can just come up and put them up to the side of it and really quickly tell whether it's a keeper for the measure you see it is and um for those of you that have gone way back with me um you know that my fish bag is how I keep my fish alive while I'm out there fishing. A fish bag, nothing more than a heavy duty laundry bag that I just repurposed. So uh, get your own at Walmart or wherever you might pick that up. Um, I think they run about, I don't know, somewhere between seven and $10, I think is what I paid for it. But I've had it for a few years now and it's still doing good. So not disappointed. So here you can see I've gotten another bite. So I am anticipating, that's one thing that I don't do uh, when I get a bite is just run to my rod and just yank it right away. What I try to do is catch the fish with his hand, so to speak, in the cookie jar, meaning I want to feel the fish actually pulling my line. I don't want to see him pulling it and then get there and then yank it up and maybe he took a break or swam away and maybe he's chewing what he has in his mouth. I wait on him like I'm doing now and actually set the hook when I actually feel the fish pulling my line. You know, so I mean to each his own, but I you know definitely feel like you might have a better opportunity to catch a fish um, if you actually wait to feel that actual pull. Uh, so that's that's what I'm doing right here as you see me um, pausing and you can see I did feel the pull and as I felt the pull I set the hook and we have a fish. So uh, that's, that's what's happening there. And you can see this is a very rocky area and you'll always notice that I have on my my rubber boots and I do that because well for two reasons because you know when you're out here a lot of times boats are coming through and water's washing up and um, the other reason is because these rocks have oysters on them and they are very sharp um, so I don't recommend flip-flops um, or any other shoes that you might want to not destroy um, so that's why the rubber boots are always on 
even on the hottest days. And I'm sure there's a few of you out there wondering, wow, why does Chris always have on long sleeves and, and both top and bottom? Well, um, one reason is the sun. You know, I, I feel cooler personally, uh, you know, being covered. And uh, you see me digging in my cooler there. There's actually another gentleman over to my uh, left here that's fishing. He actually has shrimp. And I want to say he came down from Fayetteville or up from Fayetteville, if you will. And um, so I was sharing my sand fleas with him because when I went and collected my sand fleas the other day, um, I actually it had in mind when I was coming back, I knew I had plenty for me, but I actually had in mind that I can get enough to share and, and that's what I'm, I'm doing. So I um, like to show a little hospitality, you know, to my fellow fishermen. And um, so, you know, if you see me out and about and, uh, <laughs> you know, especially the next couple of weeks and um, you see that I have some sand fleas and you don't have any, um, you know, I don't mind sharing with you. I'll give you, I'll give you a dozen or so. Uh, as long as I have enough to keep fishing, we're, we're good to go. So you see another fish coming up out of there. Uh, these fish are very nice. Um, I think on this particular day, I don't think I caught any that were not big enough. Uh, this was actually only about an hour outing. Um, so you know, in an hour, I got three uh, very nice fish. So of course, I'm very happy about that. And um, another one going into the fish bag. And I'm just conversing with the guy that's out there. And I really just... Uh, talking to him because he actually saw this fish bite my line and I didn't actually see it. He told me your rod did a little nod two times in a row. Um, I think I had my back turned or was probably giving him sand fleas or, or doing something like that. And um, because he told me to, you know, that it had nodded because I didn't see it, I went up and kind of stood behind it and lo and behold, you know, that fish was there waiting to do his thing. And um, we set the hook. And you'll always notice too, a lot of times I'm washing my hands, just getting that sand off. So. Until next time, be kind to the fish.